All right, let's have a discussion on what makes something a polynomial. And all of these right here are examples of polynomials. Even though this one doesn't have a variable, it's still a polynomial. You know, we just call it a constant. But a constant is also a polynomial. This one has one variable. This one has two different variables, but it's still a polynomial. This one has two terms, because you had a plus sign over here. But it would still be a polynomial. And we're going to get into all those names. Uh, we can think of this in terms of number of terms. This one has one term, one term, this one thing even though they're multiplied. One term, even though you got two variables, there's no plus sign here, so it's still one term. This one is two terms, term one, term two. You can also have three terms. You can have something like this. Right, so that'd be term one, term two, term three. And based, up, based upon the number of terms, we can call you something. This polynomial can be called a monomial. Right? This one would be the binomial. And this one would be a trinomial. Once you have more than three terms, we would just call you a polynomial. Right? So, but if you're one, two, or three, we can call you by these names. So once again, try to remember that these names come from the number of terms. Okay? Students get that confused with the classifications that we give the polynomials with a degree. Um, from here, we talk about degree. Degree is the, the exponent level that a polynomial has. This one has no exponent, so the degree would be zero. This one has one exponent, uh, an exponent of one, so it would be degree one. This one has two variables. Each of, each of them has an exponent. This one has an exponent of 2, an exponent of 1. You add those, and you get that this is a degree 3 polynomial. To determine the degree of the polynomial, you have to look at the individual terms. This term is, once again, just like this, it's a degree 3 term. And this term is a degree 0 term. So which one is higher? This one is higher. So the whole thing is a degree 3 polynomial. All right, based upon the degree, you're going to be given a name. So a degree zero polynomial is just called a constant. Degree one means that you're linear. Degree two means that you are a quadratic function. Degree three means you're a cubic function. Degree four means you're a quartic function. Degree five means you're quintic. And anything higher than degree 5, uh, we don't really worry about that right now. But these are the ones you have to know. Now, these classifications come from the degree, not from the number of terms. See, both of these have one term, so they're both monomials. But this one is a constant, this one is linear. Right? This one is cubic, even though it's also a monomial. So you have to be careful that you understand the classifications that come from the degree. So now, what is and what isn't a polynomial? So, would something like this be a polynomial? Well, it's a very simple check. Look at the coefficient. Is the coefficient real? Yes. This is what I tell my students. As long as you don't have an i, the minute you have an i, it's not real. It's not a polynomial. As long as your coefficient is real, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Right? It could be positive, negative, it could have radicals. The whole thing can be under a radical. It doesn't matter. As long as you don't have an i, it's real. Yes, we're good. Now, check the exponent. In this here, the exponent is a 1. It's a good thing. You want your exponents to be whole numbers. Okay? That means it can be a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3. But you can't be decimals. You can't be fractions. You can't be negatives. You can only be whole numbers. So that's, that's a perfect example. The same thing here. Even if the whole thing's under the radical, right? You can have x squared y to the third. This is still a polynomial. This is real. And both of these are whole. So you're good. Yes, it's a polynomial. What would make something not a polynomial? Well, if you had a uh, variable in the denominator. So if you had something like this, you see that variable right there in the denominator? 
this is not a polynomial. Um, there's a reason for that, because 1 over y is actually y to the negative 1, which means you don't have a whole number as your exponent, okay? Uh, or if you have a variable under a radical, so something like this. You see how the x is underneath the radical sign? That's not valid, okay? So this would not be a polynomial. Um, the reason for that is because when you have a variable under the radical, your exponent is a fraction. And we can't have fractions as our exponents, they have to be whole numbers, okay? So if you see a radical uh, and a variable under a radical sign, you automatically know that that's not a polynomial, right? Or if your exponent is something like this, that's a decimal. So you can't be, you're not a polynomial, okay? So you can have weird coefficients, that's fine or what a student would consider weird. But uh, as long as it's real, your coefficient is real, you're good, and as long as your exponents are whole, you're fine. No variables in the denominator and no variables on the radical signs. And then you would be considered a polynomial. So is this a polynomial? Just check. That's real, 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 real. Whole number, whole number, whole number. There's nothing here, so it's a whole number. So yes, this is a polynomial. Something else that we might ask you is to put this in standard form. And standard form would mean that you would have to put this in decreasing order, okay? So standard form, we just check the degrees. This one is degree 1, this one is degree 2, degree 3, and degree 0. So you start from the highest degree, so I would write this term first. So 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x, plus 8. So this would be the function in standard form. Something else that I could ask you is, based upon the number of terms, what would you call this? Well, this has 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So I would just call it a polynomial. What would be the degree? Well, which one is highest? Degree 3 is highest, so this is a degree 3 polynomial. And what would I call it? What's the classification? Because it's degree 3, it would be cubic. And what's the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient is the coefficient on the term with the highest degree. Which one has the highest degree? This one. What's the, ter uh, the coefficient on it? 2. So your leading coefficient is 2. See, when you write it in standard form, the leading coefficient is the first one. If it's not in standard form, then you have to check and you have to find the coefficient on the term with the highest degree. All right, when you look at this example right here, this one is not a polynomial. Why? Because we have variables in the denominator. If you look at this example, you would also notice that this one is not a polynomial because we have a variable under a radical sign. Alright, if you look at this example, is this a polynomial? I would have to say yes because the coefficient is real and your exponents are whole numbers. So yes, it's a polynomial. How many terms do you see? I see one term. Okay, there's no plus sign in between them or minus sign. Um, because it's one term, how would I classify it? I would classify it as a monomial. What degree is this polynomial? Uh, well, you check. I have two variables, and in, a, in one term, I have to add them. So this one is 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So this is a degree 4 polynomial. And based upon the degree, I can classify this as quartic. And what would be my leading coefficient? I only have one term, so my leading coefficient is 1 over 6.